Hi everybody and welcome back to my freezing cold hanger and kit plane enthusiast YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to get the elevator servo finally mounted in the airplane. Now, I already had it mounted and I came up with a beautiful design, a really nice stiffener plate, put the servo in there and realized it didn't work. Not the servo didn't work, but my design didn't work. And it didn't work because there's one key issue that I completely forgot about on mounting the elevator servo. Now, in order to set this servo in the aft part of the fuselage in the correct spot, I need to have the elevator cable in position. And you can see right here is the elevator cable. And I kind of just have it locked in place in that hole so that from the back that I can pull it tight. And in the back of the airplane, I have the elevator coming out of the hole. It goes up through the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer, out the top. And for right now, I just have it clamped to the elevator horn. But this at least gets this cable in the correct position that it will run all the way from here up to the forward part of the fuselage. And now with this cable in the correct position, I can now position the servo under that cable. You know, I thought this would be a great spot in the video for a commercial. As you guys know, I'm saving up money for an engine, so I need all of the money I can get. And a while ago, I have worked out a, a promotional deal for you guys with Grip Mat. These orange rubber mats, whether you own an airplane, you do maintenance on an airplane, or you're building an airplane, they come in super handy because as you can see, they don't slide around. You can put a bunch of Clecos and your tools in here, put this on the airplane, whether it's painted or not, it doesn't scratch the airplane and it's a great way to hold your tools. If you go to gripmat.com and when you go to checkout, you use my discount code KITPLANE10, you'll get 10% off your first order. So help me out and buy a bunch of grip mats. So to explain my original design, I have a servo here with a cap stand on it which has these cables but picture this as a regular servo with just a regular so servo arm my originally my original design had this little push rod coming off of the servo arm and then we have this little nylon piece here and what this does is it just clamps to the elevator cable and then when i move the servo it moves the cable just like that all right, this is kind of hard to see because I'm holding a light just in the back of the plane, but you see this stiffener plate I have here. It gets riveted to the bottom skin, the L angle there, and then this forward angle, and it really stiffens up that area uh, for mounting a servo. Designing and fabricating a stiffener plate like this is actually pretty easy. I just started off by cutting a piece of paper, putting it into the airplane and marking where I needed it bent, and that gives me a paper template to use on the aluminum. You guys might remember a while ago when I was designing mounts for the servo, I bought a two foot by two foot sheet of aluminum in zero, oh, 50 thousandths thickness. And that's what I was going to make the mounts out of until I realized that Dynon sold perfectly good mounts for the servos. That's what I used. So I still had this sheet of aluminum hanging around and that's what I used. You can see in the corner there, I cut out my stiffener plate from this aluminum. After cutting out the stiffener plate, filing the edges smooth, match drilling it inside the fuselage, I primed and painted it. And you can see the Dynon mount to the right. That actually, the servo actually mounts in the Dynon mount and then that mount gets bolted to the stiffener plate in the floor. In this picture here, you can see that servo with the arm on it and my push rod that I was uh, originally going to use. So you can see this is this picture was taken during my original design as I was fabricating the stiffener plate and getting it all ready to put into the airplane. So to explain how I kind of goofed up on designing the elevator servo mount, if we look at my aileron servo, you can see the servo there with this servo arm and that gets connected to that white push rod and I'm having a custom piece made that connects those two together right now, but it's not done yet. But one of the things I was doing when I was finding a position to mount the aileron servo is I really paid attention to the amount of travel that I need for the servo. 
Uh, I think if I remember right, there's 2.6 inches of max travel uh, on the servo. So I just had to make sure that I had enough travel. With the different ways I was designing to connect this push rod, I was originally designing it to connect to here. So I wanted to make sure I had enough travel. So I paid a lot of attention to that. Then when I mounted the elevator servo, I was so concerned with getting it lined up with a cable and getting a nice stiffener plate mounted that I never really thought about the travel. Now, since the servo connects to this top elevator cable, I measured the travel that this moves from full up to full down, and it's just under five inches. <laughs> and that's when I realized five inches is a little bit more than the 2.6 inches available with the servo. So that brings us to this servo here, which you can see looks a little bit different than a regular servo with the arm on it. Actually, the servo is exactly the same. It's just this part is different here. They call this a cap stand. And as you can see, there's a cable in here. Uh, it locks in down here and one end loops around this way. The other end loops around this way. And the advantage to this is instead of just having the 2.6 inches of travel with the servo arm, you now have much greater range of travel because this can keep rotating this drum uh, and this, this, these cables here get attached to the elevator cable. They actually get attached with the same block right here, which you know, I'll show you later when I get it attached. But uh, Dynon was great to work with. I told him that um, the other servo that I ordered with the arm, it wouldn't work. Uh, so they just said, ship that one back and they shipped me this one here. Uh, so this one's all set. But I do think that I will have to change my mount a little bit because it's kind of hard to explain, but picture with this on here with the servo arm. You know, I, I didn't, I had this a little bit angled like this so that when the, the, the elevator cable was coming down here, it wouldn't hit the servo. Uh, but with this cap strand or cap stand, I need it right under the cable. So basically, instead of having my servo mounted here, I, I'm going to need it mounted about here about a, I don't know, maybe an inch over. Uh, so I might have to modify my mount in the airplane a little bit just to move this servo over. And that's what I'm going to try to work on today. All right, here is the modified servo mount ready to go. And you can see to move it, if you're looking at it here, to move it to the right, I just made another plate for the bottom, riveted the plate to the servo mount, with some flush rivets because this will sit flat on the bottom of the plane. And then I put four nut plates here to screw the whole assembly to the bottom of the skin. And uh, that's ready to install. Before I put it in the airplane, I wanted to put the servo in the mount. And it's not in there permanently because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wind up taking it back out again to put the connectors and stuff on. But right now I just want to mount the servo and make sure everything fits. I'll just put two screws in the bottom of the plane instead of four, just to temporarily hold it, and then I can show you how it's mounted. This is the nylon part that connects the wire, the cables coming from the servo to the elevator cable. And if you'll notice in the front, there's a, a bigger slot and a smaller slot. The bigger slot that goes all the way through the nylon here will clamp onto the elevator servo and then this the smaller slot is where the the cable from the servo connects to so this is kind of what it looks like and there's two of them and i'll put these on and show you what it looks like all right i'm just trying to hold my camera up here to show you how this works and keep in mind that nothing's really hooked up permanently yet there's no tension on the cables and it's certainly not adjusted I'm not going to hook this up permanently until after the airplane is painted and the elevator cable is, is fully installed. But what you can see, hopefully, is the two small cables coming off that cap stand and it gets clamped to the elevator cable on one side and it also gets clamped to the elevator cable on the other side. And then of course once it's all properly adjusted, when that servo moves, it can roll that cable on the cap stand and get your five inches of travel that you need for the elevator movement. So everything fits nice. It works really nicely. I mean, as far as fit, I haven't cycled the servo at all, but 
On the bottom of the plane, you can see the rivets where I riveted in that stiffener. I just have two of the four screws holding the servo in. Uh, so that's where it looks like here. It's really hard to get the camera up there and kind of show you, but hopefully you get the idea of how it's mounted. And uh, you know, if you want to put an autopilot in your Super Duty, this may be one way you want to do it. There may be other ways to do it, but it was really hard to come up with a way to mount this elevator servo to the cable. But I think I've I think I've done it pretty nicely here and got it in a pretty good spot. So there we go. Well, that's it for today. I reached my goal. I got the servo mounted. I'm really happy about that because it's been on my mind for a while. I now have the aileron servo mounted and the elevator servo mounted. I can take all the wires in the back of the fuselage now and trim them to length, put the connector on there, put the connector on the servo wires and get that hooked up. And then I can fire up the Dynon and it'll now recognize the elevator servo. So that will be all set in the Dynon and uh, I can move on to other things now. I've been doing some work on the back of the airplane. I did make another fiberglass fairing that closes up the back right between the, the dorsal fin and the bottom of the rudder, uh, but that needs trimmed out and finished yet. I just haven't got a lot done because I've been picking up a lot of extra trips at work so I can make extra money so that I can actually put an engine on the front of this airplane. So who knows when I'll order the engine, maybe at Oshkosh this year, but uh, I want to pay cash for it. I don't like to finance these kind of things. So as soon as I can save up, I figure between the engine and the firewall forward, it's about 55,000. So when I can save up that much money, I'll buy an engine. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'm going to make some lunch, head to the gym, come back and maybe do a little wiring.